sooner. Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester joins us now for a first on CNBC interview. President Mester, great of you to join us. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Sarah. That, that is the question. It was a really strong report. More than 900,000 jobs added. Does it change the way you think about your policy path? So it was a great report. It's nice to see those numbers. You know, we're still almost eight and a half million jobs below where we were before the pandemic. So we need more, more of those kind of job reports um, coming out um, to actually make more progress um, than we've seen so far. That, but I do say the economic outlook is brightening. Um, we're hearing that across almost every sector in our district. And I think the vaccination rollout, you know, is certainly part of that. I think that's gone much faster than some of us thought it would. Um, it's allowing for more safe relaxation of activity restrictions. There's high levels of savings. There's pent up demand. And then there's the support of fiscal policy that added support and also a monetary policy. So, that, you know, I'm thinking that we'll see a very strong second half of the year, but we're still far from our policy goals. So that's what we're looking at. And I'm particularly looking at, um, as a Federal Reserve monetary policymaker, are we at maximum employment? Are we at 2% inflation and moderately above 2% inflation, as our um, forward guidance says? So, you know, it was great to see that report. Um, we need more of them coming our way. The market, President Mester, is pricing in a Federal Reserve interest rate increase December 2022. That's a full year ahead of where you guys are forecasting raising rates. Who's wrong? <laughs> well, we all have our own forecast, right? And, you know, what we're doing um, is sticking with our forward guidance. And, of course, that forward guidance is based on what happens in the economy. So you can have different uh, policy paths. You know, the market can have a different forecast than us Fed policymakers do. I revised up my forecast for the economy from December to our last meeting where we had new SEPs, um, taking into account some of the resiliency we've seen in the economy so far. But I like to point out to people who say, wow, the economy is really resilient. There, it, it had a lot of help from fiscal policy um, sure. and from monetary policy. So I think that explains some of what's going on. And I think we need to be um, you know, very deliberately patient um, in our approach to monetary policy and really focus in on hitting those, those goals that we have for monetary policy. Sure, patience maybe for rates, but, but what about all of that asset purchases, all the, all the bond buying stimulus that's out there? Do you think it's realistic, for instance, to expect the taper to begin before the end of the year? Well, again, we're going to be, you know, consistent with our forward guidance. So it's really about how is the economy going to perform over this year, um, you know, we've said that we're going to continue at least at 80 billion per month on treasuries and 40 billion per month increases in agency MBS until substantial further progress on our goals have been made. We did get that nice employer report, but as I said, we're still almost eight and a half million jobs below where we were, uh, you know, before the pandemic hit. So again, we just need to see more progress. Um, and, you know, we need to see more of those kind of good numbers um, coming our way. President Mester, it's nice to see you. It's Scott Wapner. You said recently, and I'm quoting, we're not going to let inflation run rampant. And I'm wondering what makes you think that you're going to have the last say in that and that you can control where inflation goes with words alone, given what Sarah said about projections for the next interest rate hike especially given the fact that you've got now a $2 trillion infrastructure plan on the table, not passed, but at least on the table, on top of a considerable amount of money that's already been spent? Well, you know, we're going to be looking at the readings on inflation, and I think in the next couple of months we'll see some high ones. But the real question is, are those high readings, and, and as you know, some of it's because we had very low readings a year ago, and so they're going to fall out of the calculations. The real question is, Right? Are those going to be sustained? There's some supply chains issues that are going to contribute to higher inflation readings, but the real, you know, is that really going to be a uh, elevated inflation readings for overall consumer price inflation? And my my guess is, and my forecast is that no, we're going to see some high readings, but they're not going to be sustained. When I talk to business contacts in the fourth district. 
right? A lot of them are citing some input price increases that they're facing because of those uh, supply chain issues. But when you ask them, okay, are you planning to pass some of those cost increases on to their customers? They don't feel they have that type of pricing power. And so that sustained continual increase in inflation, I don't really expect that to happen right away. I think we're gonna you know, be accommodative on our policy because we do want inflation to move up moderately above 2% for some time. Um, so actually higher inflation readings moderately at a moderate pace above 2% would be a positive. Sure. Of course, we always have to be evaluating the economic outlook um, and the economy. Things could turn differently than I'm anticipating. Um, but I don't have a concern that inflation is going to run away from us. Um, there isn't a lot of evidence that that's happening now. And the factors that held inflation down over the last long expansion, so that flat Phillips curve, globalization, technological change, um, those things are still working. So they're going to work against um, the demand and supply factors um, that are going to be pushing inflation up. And then we'll have to see. But we have tools at our disposal if things turn differently than sure. we expect. I just don't think that that's the high risk now um, that we're going to see that happen. I mean, Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.